Bars is an open source platform that simplifies the backend development of mobile and web applications, allowing developers to focus on creating features for their app without joining in the complexities of backend development and server management. It offers a set of ready-to-use features that streamline the development process. It's a powerful free open source alternative to Firebase to get a backend ready in a minute for your next project. Let's see how to get starting using Parse platform. To install it, you can follow the installation procedure on their documentation or use our platform LSTO to do it for you with automatic updates and backups. To install Parse, go to ls.io, hit login, click on deploy my first service, search for Parse, select, then choose your cloud provider, your region and your service plan and hit next. Then you can adjust your level of support, rename your instance and create service. When your instance is created, open it, click on display admin UI, copy the password and open your instance here. To log in, your username is your LSTO email and the password from your clipboard, hit login. By default, you have an app that is created, so you can start using it directly. If you want to rename it, go to your application dashboard on LSTO, update config, scroll down, and you can rename the app name here. Then update and restart. Let's open our application, my app. We arrive on our application dashboard on Parse, but to know where to start exactly, the best is to have a look at the documentation. On the main documentation page, it's split it between the different SDK provided, so you can go with your favorite language and have a look at the guide. As my main language is JavaScript, I will go to JavaScript and click on Guide. From there, you have absolutely everything you need to get started. First, you have the instruction to install it, either if you use Node.js, so in the backend, or use any front-end framework or vanilla JavaScript, such as React or jQuery. And once you have installed it and initialized your SDK with your API keys, you have all the documentation explaining every single features. For example, object, which is the database. You have a very well written documentation to explain you how it works, what you can do. And it goes from the very basic to very advanced topic. Let's jump to saving objects and have a try to it. If like me, you don't have a project you want to use, but you just want to test parse, you can go to core, API console, JS console, and from there you can play with parse. There is a default code available. We can just try to run it. And you can see it created an object named hello world. You have automatically a created at and an updated at. Now, if we go to the browser section, on the left, we have the different tables available. So role and user are the default one to handle authentication and roles. But you have a new one that has been created automatically, my class. It has an object ID, which is set automatically. Same for created at, updated at, and ACL. And you have my field that has been defined to hello world. Within the browser, you can add other columns, add row manually, manage your column, like reordering them and so on. But as you've seen, this one was created automatically from the code. So sometimes you don't even need to open it and use that feature only for browsing data. You have useful features to browse them, like export all your data or the schema. You can filter them based on any column and the values, and you can edit the class level permission but we will have a look at it just after. If we go back to the documentation, one of the great features available out of the box of parse is the authentication system. Go to users, sign up, and you have the code ready to use to create users. Let's copy it. Go back to the API console, JS console, paste it, and we will try to log our new user. So my name, my pass, but you have to write the real username, the real password, and the real email. So you have a custom field that is set. You can put anything you want. You don't have first to create them in the browser. You just add them and it will automatically be set. And that is possible because it's using NoSQL database. Then let's run it. And we can see below that our user has been created. Automatically, it generated a session token. So if we want to auth our user, we just have to copy it, use it in our platform, and we are logged in. Let's try to run it again. So it will create another user. 
but we have an error because account already exists for this username. So let's change our username. Let's try to run it again. And we have another error because the email address is already used. And this is made possible because parse user module handle all of it for us. So we don't have to add any check. It's already here. Now we have our user created. We might want to log in. So just copy this code and replace everything with it. We will log our user. And you can see it's Pretty simple. We use the user module from parse and use the login method. I think it's my space name and my pass. Run. And we can see below we have our user with the session token we can use in the front end to authenticate our user. And we have some ACL. ACL means access control list. It's permission set to this user. So you can see on this instance, I guess it's my user ID, we have the read and the write authorization. Let's go to the browser, user, and yes, it's my object ID, and I am allowed only me as that username to read and write on top of my user. So no one is able to modify me. In my code, I won't have to add any check because it's secured through the ACL. There are also other useful features available on the user's model. For example, you want your users to be verified before being able to do anything, you can enable verifying emails and it will send for you the email verification and handle when the user accept or deny it. We can also search for forgotten. Ah yes, so resetting password. You have a method available to send a reset password request. It's features that are always the same but takes time to develop. And here it's out of the box for you so you can focus on your core application. Now that we have our user, we might want to add data to our database go to associations and we can use that code to make a new post. Let's go back to the API console, JS console, and let's have a look at it. It's console.log user posts. So what is it doing? We are creating a post. We set its title, body, and the users it belongs to. Then we save it. And then we have that code that is very optional, that is iterating through all the user posts. So let's try to run it first. We have an error because user isn't defined. On the documentation, they are using parseuser.current, so you can have access to the current session of the user. But you can, for example, log in your user and then do action on it. If we go on top here, we correct the username and password, and we run our code. Now in the logs, we can see we have one item containing all our article, the title, the body, the user it is attached to. And if we run it again, my new post to run, because we are logging all our user articles, we can see we have two articles. And the second one is my new post to. When we save data and attach it to a user, if we go to browser, post, we have the ACL that are set globally to be public, read and write, so anyone can modify it. What we can do is programmatically to assign the ACL so only that user is able to modify it. By the way, you can see that we have a link here to the user, so it's able to go to it and we have the information of our user. So it's useful when there are relations between entities in your database. If you want only your user to be able to modify that entity or maybe even to read it, you can edit the ACL for the instance that you create. So you can follow the documentation to do it. This is based on a user basis, the ACL. But you have another option when you want it to make it more globally. You can define roles. This is one of the default table that is already here in the browser when you create your application. And when you create roles, what you are able to do is not to set it per user, but per role. So only administrator will have access to some specific features or will be able to modify all the user, all the post if you are an administrator. But you can also use it, for example, for a premium feature. Only the paid members have access to some blog article. So you can create a premium role and assign it to some of your users. That way, when you create a premium article, you only have to assign it to the role and don't have to go through all your users, check if they are still premium members or not. It's very useful. 
Let's have a look at another ready-to-use feature, it's named Files. You can store and read files without having to mount an Amazon S3 or any other platform. Let's go to the API console, JS console. I have prepared this code that contains a base64 text file. It will save the file. Then we create a post and we define the file column with the file that we create and automatically it will know it's a file type. Then it will save the post. We can run it. I didn't add some logs, so let's have a look in browser. Post. And we have myfile.txt. We can open it. And we have our text file. I love using parse with LSTO. Of course, this is an example, but you can use images or any file you need. I will let you read the documentation to see all the different features available for the database, the files and the world and authorization. Let's continue diving into the dashboard. We have webhooks, so we can create a webhook and we can call a function when it happens, either before save, after, before delete or after delete, let's say after save, we will choose what class is triggering it, let's say post, and we will call our webhook URL. So we will be notified when a post is saved and do any action we need. This is for events, but we can also run jobs, go to scheduled jobs, and you need to create your jobs programmatically. You just have to follow the documentation to create them, but it allows you to run backend code at a specified time, for example, every morning or every hour. So you can run backend code without waiting for users to go into your website. What feature very used by Parse users is the push notification feature. It allows you to send push notification to Android and iOS mobile phones. You can select an audience or create one, so on which platform you want it, let's say iOS, we can define condition, but we need an installation class before adding this. So let's go to installation. We need to go to browser, create a class, and one of the default class available is named installation. So create and add columns. So we could just create, we don't need to add columns. And this is the default class for push notification token. So we are able to identify our user with the device token. We could add another column referring to the user to be able to create our targets and send push notification to those users. Now let's go back to push, create an audience. We can add condition. So it's the list of the column. If we added our user or user information, we could segment our user easily. You can decide to save the audience. Once you have selected it, you can write your push notification either by sending directly text, you can preview the result here on iOS and Android, or you can write JSON. So by using JSON syntax, you can add images like a thumbnail, but I don't know that syntax, so I will just stick to text for now. And once you're good, you just have to click on send push and your push notification will be sent. Thank you for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this video. If it's the case, please hit the like button as it really helps our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming videos. If you want to continue your open source software journey, I recommend you to watch this video here.